So I have arrived in Moutier, Switzerland at the Tornos factory. Super excited, currently trying to find the way in. Let's try this way. Welcome everybody, Welcome. hanging out with Michael Hauser, the CEO of Tornos SA. What's the SA stand for? It's a Société Anonyme, this is a sh um, shareholding company, corporation, okay. let's say, the Inc. Inc. Right. Okay, <laughs> exactly. okay yeah. excellent. Yeah. So this is the reception area, I already filmed a little bit of it. Beautiful, you just remodeled this whole area like last month, We had month, to, right? yeah, we had to, yeah. Excellent. You can see here, just modern, comfortable, cozy furniture. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe All right. more important is this stuff here. I did see that. Did you so see that? I'm here for about five hours. What do you got for me? Actually, for you, I will make a very special company tour. But that's a different one. Huh? We'll see, yeah? Okay. They don't really decide whether you cut or you leave it <laughs> yeah, yeah. online. Huh? I'm going to film until they tell me not to. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, you see here basically the, the parts uh, that can be produced on Thomas machines. Huh? You see the it's different market incredible. segments? Yeah, you got the medium sized parts, bigger parts, yeah. these insanely tiny parts. Yeah, partially you cannot even see them. Yeah. So we're looking at this print, looking at the part, trying to convert in my head millimeters to inches. That is six thou diameter. And as I'm figuring that out, Michael says to me, the part is right there. And it's got the thing on the end. It's even worse. Yeah, it's even worse. You this can't. is the bar it comes from. Exactly. <laughs> this is the bar it's once come, huh? So who would ever do that? Yeah. Crazy watchmakers. <laughs> yeah. So this is a typical watchmaker. Parts, then electronics, probes, and also a big important market is the medical dental. Mm -hmm. And you see, for example, what we can do in, uh, in medical. You see, this is all the parts we can do. Now, are these customer-driven parts, or, or are you guys coming up with these examples? Both, both. Yeah. Huh? So, a customer asking us, and we also come yep. up with solutions in all kind of fields. Whatever you need, micro mechanics here, for example, if you want to to make a, a little tiny watch part. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you know, all what is in the mechanical watch we are able to produce here. Huh? I might want to take that one home. Yes, yes, of <laughs> course. Huh? And we provide all the technology to do that. Huh? Look at this one. All this one, which comes in the mechanical watch, we're able to do. Then we have a, a, a little, I will give you a package of that. Okay. So here's our... Yeah, uh, I read through that one. I just yeah. the mail. Yep. Cool, huh? Very cool. Pasta, pasta machine, huh? Yep. Okay, so now I would say let's leave that, that area and let's go okay. where it starts. R&D software, R &D department. software and department. And you see that's the brain. Uh, actually, they're not brains. I don't know where they are. <laughs> we make a break. So here's the electronics. So here we make our control. We write the software. You can see here, later on I'll show you, 3D printing. Where they make little parts, you know. Right. Trials, all, all this kind of stuff. So oh, two, uh, two okay. words, huh? Yeah, a holder block. Exactly. And uh, quite interesting. It's also here, right? So little, little, little packages of software, and they, in real time, they control uh, their progress. Oh, so this is their progress. It's their progress. Interesting. And they, they program their own software to monitor their progress. I've heard of Scrum. It's um, yeah. so incremental working packages. Yeah. So I do a little bit, you do a little bit, and I, I fulfill eight of my seven tasks, right? Or seven of my eight yeah, tasks, yeah. and then. The other one can rely, and since we okay. introduced that, we're quite good on that. Huh? That's pretty cool. I'm wondering where all the guys, this is normally full, we come, <laughs> later on we come back, because yep. normally this is fully crowded, maybe they have a meeting. And now we come into mechanics. This is where we make all our spindles and guide bushes, you see? Mm -hmm. All of these components on the upper side, and the machines, the related machines to that, guide bush and motors. And the guy who sits here designs all of this one. Yeah. For example, you can see this is a guide bush system. 
Uh, so this is a typical working place. Huh? Excusez, les gens sont où Disparu. Uh, tech days. Tech ah, days. tech days. Ouais. Ah. <laughs> Et pour, pour toute la journée ou non ouais. Oui. Oui. <laughs> okay. Good. So they have a tech days, internal tech days, so okay. all day long they have uh, internal trainings. Okay. So therefore, therefore there's nobody here. <laughs> this is the purchase department. We changed a lot in the last years, uh, so it's very international. So I was just telling Michael that I purchased my GT13, Tornos GT13, yesterday. So I am part of the family now. There was a guy um, who is making very small parts. Huh? Yeah. And once I gave to you, huh? like this guy here. All his life, he just did small parts. Yeah. Huh? Let's have a look. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Ça va vous? J'ai dit que vous êtes le seul qui peut faire des petites pièces. Non, non, non. Tout le monde qui peut faire des petites pièces. <laughs> C'est les machines qui peuvent faire des petites pièces. <laughs> he, said, he just said, huh? That everyone can do the small pieces. Uh, <laughs> and the machine does it by itself. Of course. Oui, ça, c'est pas... Ah, bah, je vous... Ce sont des pièces, hey, hey. I think they're getting smaller with every uh, container. Yes. Oh, yes, look at oh, this oh, one. Oh, oh. Maybe I, I lose it, huh? Maybe I do it like this one. Look at this part here. Oh, that last one. This one, yeah? A little tiny one. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. I got it. It's got threads on it. Yes. You can hide it under your fingernail. Isn't it crazy? There's even some holes in the side, eh? See that? That's something pretty cool. I have to show you. That's the assembly line. Here. So we move. It's a flow assembly, we call it. So we move the machine every day, and every basically every day one mm. machine out. Huh? So it's like a, in the car it. industry, huh? Yep, yep. So you sh move, and then you have the rocking stations where you assemble. Huh? So you see the machine starts from the beginning, right? And, and then, then it, it gets uh, it, it gets married here. Huh? So it gets oil plumbing, yeah. electrical, yeah. pneumatics, etc. Exactly. Et exactly. Yeah. And you can see also the working places quite nicely organized. Yes. Um, you know, we have values at, at Thomas. Right. Um, uh, speed up, to be open, to dare, uh, reliability, um, teamwork, and appreciation. And all of these values, we have a so-called weather forecast. You see the sun and the bad weather here. Mm -hmm. And the people make a self-assessment. Okay. Whether they correspond to the values. So, today you can see whether it's not sunshine, but it's not so bad, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's okay. Um, reliability, there's some clouds. That means some of the guys did not deliver quality pieces to each other. Mm -hmm. And they are the measures to do to become better. So, and this is the self-assessment of people. You see, seven people voted for we are oh, good, okay. and the rest said bad. Uh, you see? So that's... Uh, and these values correspond to our strategy. Right. So there's the behavior of the people necessary to achieve our targets. That's pretty cool, huh? That's very cool. That's, for example, it's a nano machine. Okay. That's so the beginning of a nano. Yeah, exactly. That's the beginning of a nano you see here. And then we marry the machine with the housing. The guide bushing is here. That's that, the front. Yeah. This that, is the back. This, this is the, the back operation. It's the main operation. And you stand in front of... This is the machine you stand in front of like this one. Huh? Okay, so the part comes out here. Yeah. Here, here's your subspindle. Subspindle, exactly. And the guide bush comes here. Yeah. Oh, and comes. then your tools go... Exactly. Like, like... Yeah. 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 And this machine only does um, four millimeter and less. Up to seven millimeter because of now we have a seven millimeter. That's right. We have two models now.
keeps going. So this guy is the Swiss Nano. Look at this. So tiny. So this is the GT13, similar to the exact one that I just ordered. Not the exact one. Interesting. Okay. I haven't actually seen one up close. This is exactly what I wanted to see here. I wanted to see a machine just like what mine is going to be in six weeks. Uh, I want to play it. I want to push cycle start. I want to do something. I want to put my head inside and understand. It looks a lot smaller than, uh, than it does in the brochure. So you've got four static working tools, drills or end mills are, you know, not rotating. And then these are static tools too, but you can also put live tool blocks at the top to have them spinning, which I'm going to do. And you got your three live tools there, you got your turning tools there. Got another turning block there, you can put a drilling block in, which I'm going to do. They have a thread whirler here, which makes those crazy medical implant threads. Sub spindle. Interesting. So I've never you had a machine with oil. I've only had coolant. New product development. The one thing I noticed is every building has windows, 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 windows everywhere. It's beautifully bright in here. There's lighting too, of course, but it's it's pleasant. We need windows. I'm working on it. So this one here is the GT26, the big brother to my 13 much bigger inside just much more spacious you get a couple more tools on that side a couple more tools on that side more drills uh, otherwise they're basically the same this is just bigger goes up to 26 mil but I, I weighed the two you know this is not that much more expensive but I weighed the two designs and it doesn't give me anything else that I need so I stuck with the smaller one Oh, and this one has the B axis, so that whole plate spins out up to 90 degrees, maybe even more. Lets you drill at an angle, um, lets you do some crazy stuff. But it limits you because you don't get as many drill and boring bar spots. So I decided not to go for that option. So they have this amazing small parts inventory for assembly. You know, little things like plugs and washers and screws and fittings. And made by this company, Bossard. These are all individual scales. If you look in the back there, it measures the weight automatically. And then inventory, as they get, as the inventory gets low, it automatically reorders. New shipment comes in, they dump it in. It knows the new weight. That is fantastic. Because when you have the hundreds or thousands of different parts, why do you need to think about it when it can be automated? So. One of these uh, carriers, when it's when you can see, for example, there's some parts missing, yep. and therefore they don't put it into the assembly center. They're just waiting until this will be finished, and then they take it out, because otherwise they lose too much time of looking for parts. Yeah, exactly. So this is one set of spindles. Yeah, yeah, I love the foam. They've got everything laid out. These are sticking up, so you can grab them properly. You know when something's missing. Oh, I love it. You see, that's a. Uh, with our center where we do the spindle, let's go in. The final product for different machines, spindles. You can see here the assembly. Ooh. The assembly. So here is where this is where we make the sorry, where we make the precision assembly. Everything well organized. You see the carrier what I showed you before. Huh? Now we'll have a look how we produce the parts to for our spindles. Yeah. And uh, that's the. Manufacturing site, Thomas. 
Oh, I can smell the coolant already. You can smell that. Please wear the sheep pots. Okay. And you can see that's where it starts from. From the raw material to the finished. We have the grinding machines. Oh, this is pretty cool here. High end equipment. Okay, the machine shop, you can see a grinder, a cylindrical grinder, student. So I see it's spinning right now, is it just staying yeah. warm? and, and it's staying warm, it's warm up. It's like an idle. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got a big DMG Mori. Yeah. DMG Mori, yes, um, to produce uh, some key components. That's for the encoder, you know. Oh wow! Measure. This goes on a spindle, and then the uh, sensor meshes. It's basically so that could easily be a ring that you put yeah. on, but you decided to make it as yeah. an entire component. And yeah. And each of these pieces, tools is, is measured, huh? Yeah, they have to be very precise. Oh yes. Look it's at this one! Holy wrong. cow! Wrong. Measuring room. That's a chick bore machine. Yasta. A Yasta, big one. Big one, a Yasta. And you see the pellet system here. You see all the working places here. All the pellets full of, of material. And this is it's feeding the machine. You see here the parking station, loading station. This kind of parts. Big, big parts. Yeah, I've heard a bit about Yastas. They're very, very high end, very, good, good machine, very yeah. well regarded. Yeah. So you've got this whole gated cell, forklift can come in and put yeah. stuff in. Yeah. And basically you see all the parts here, it be machined, and mostly it runs in the night. So during the day they load and during the and then they, they run the machine on the weekends. Right. So there must be some robot system that comes in yeah. and feeds. Yeah. Here. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that big yellow yeah. thing right there. Those are gigantic pallets. Yeah. <laughs> 50 taper, I guess? Yeah. Or even the one bigger? More. Another system. And behind you have uh, Makino machines. Wow. Uh -huh. So all these runs, all these ones are working stations to load the, the pallet system. Huh? Okay. Oh yeah, and I see the gate yeah. right there. So a guy will, it'll pull it out. The guy will so, load it here. Yeah. Loading and then machining. And you've got the crane, so you can pull exactly. it from here exactly. and then go and then exactly. put your parts on and then yeah. it goes into the system and then yeah, it's exactly. just gone. Yeah, exactly. And then you, it comes out. <laughs> Shoot. Wow. And there's just pallet and pallet and pallet and pallet and pallet, pallet, pallet. They keep going and going and going and going. And going. Holy moly. So what would you say I mean, this is clearly, you guys make a lot of machines. Yes. Like, not insane, you're not the biggest producer in the world, but, but you don't want to be. You want to be the best. <laughs> Thank you for, for uh, this clarification. Well, it's true. Uh, no, like, we I do, mean, uh, that, that looks machines. like a lot of production to me. Yeah, but you have, to, you have to be smart with it. You have to uh, plan your time and work accordingly and, exactly. and let it run when it's run. That's why we have robots. So that exactly. They can run while we're sleeping. And don't forget, uh, wages, salaries in, in Switzerland yeah. are quite high. Yeah. And we don't have so much resources, so we do that. Okay. And therefore, we have to household with our resources. And okay. the best to do that is invest in automatic machine and robots. Right. Yeah. Yet you still need very smart, very talented people to point. make it happen. I see that in our shop. I mean, we have seven people. I would love to hire more people. Yeah. And don't, uh, don't find them, eh? we, we, we can make them. You know, or we can find them. Yeah. But it's not that we're getting robots to eliminate people. We're getting robots to let our people use their brains. Exactly. Uh, and let the machine run during the night. Yep. Uh, and uh, on weekends. But you need someone who programs them. Yes. Who sets them up. And that's a challenge. 
Now, John, that building is pretty cool here. That building is from 1884. Wow. Look at this. I mean, this is picturesque. Yeah. Look how, the, how good well maintained. And this was the foundation of Tonos. And um, the story about this building is quite amazing. Yeah? It was the, the building was taken over by okay. people who just lived there. Who lived there for ten years? <laughs> for ten years, and we couldn't get rid of them okay. because they were just there. In the, there, yeah. And, uh, and the local government didn't help us to get these people out. And after ten years, we succeeded in getting them wow. out. Wow! And now I will show you what we did with this building. Okay. The foundation of Tonos. We transferred it into something special. I will show you. So I was reading on the site that in this town. Yeah. Uh, the sliding headstock lathe yeah, was, it was invented. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to show you the first ever built uh, Swiss type lathe. All right. So now we will see what you can do with an old factory. Okay. Ooh. We built our own canteen, our restaurant. Yeah. And you can see it's still the floor, it's still the old one. These are wood. And so this is for our employees. Yep. Where we, they have lunch. All, all these parts here, the tables and so on, self-made, homemade. This is part of our factory. The remainders. <laughs> no way. Look no the, way. Look, look at the machine. Give you a sense of size there. Yeah. From 1875. Holy cow. Yeah. There were three guys. Uh, Schweizer was one guy, and I show the other one. All these guys, they came out of this shop here. It's it's so weird filming because I'm yeah. looking through the camera yeah. for you guys. I'm not looking for myself. So <laughs> it says Tornos. Tornos from 1925. Uh, we have even this is even a modern machine. <laughs> I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Okay, so you got tools coming in from the sides. These come down as well. Automatic. These are cam driven, right? Yeah, that's cam machine, yeah. Okay, so I gotta step behind this thing. There's another one. 1900. Yeah. The Junker. Junker. Oh, see a pretty cool look at this one. They found one in the river. What? Ah! It's not overhauled yet. Not, but we'll make it. We'll change it. Yeah, I like it like this. <laughs> Imagine we still provide spare parts for these machines. No way. I guess, I tell you, I promise, we have still spare parts of these machines because in the watch industry, they still use these machines. So they were produced back in the 1900s, yes. early we 1900s. Still have parts for them. Wow. Yeah. F from before, or are you still making parts to spec? We're making parts to yeah. spec. Yeah. Because I guess you still have the prints? Or you're just we reverse all, engineering? No, or? we have all the prints. Everything. You know, Swiss are collectors. Yeah. And they keep everything. Okay. Even, look, even the plans of the house here, of the factory. Yeah. Look, it's all the original. I love it. So we kept that. And now, John, I will show you something super cool. You will not believe. It's from 1860. I was wrong. What? The building is 1860. Building, yeah. By the way, this is the leftover of the squatter. Oh yeah? Look at yeah. that. <laughs> I just said go. It's nice. Yeah. Leave it. Yeah. Now I show you something which is a playing field for young people. Whoa. A, we call it incubator. Incubator. Yeah. So that's a big place. Look in here. Where they have uh, workshops uh, of young people. Where we give them a room to play. All this furniture is used from all material uh, from the factory. So look at this one. They took wow. just the, <laughs> the glass uh, from, the, from the windows and these this were, I don't know, for files. And they yeah. made a table out of that. And it's perfect. Perfect, yeah. So, working spaces. Like this one. This is where... It's gorgeous. Yeah. So explain what your goal is for this space this space is ba basically at the place where we design the next generation of machines oh. with the next generation of people now next generation you talk about like next year or no, five no. years ten five, years twenty five, years ten years ahead huh? interesting so what would be the machine uh, for maybe 
next generation after you. Yeah. Uh, and that machine looked different. And we have pretty good results in hiring people, young talents, right. and let them let them play. Let them play. Yeah. Uh, and by playing, and you have to have a you know, environment which mm -hmm. is uh, attractive and yep. And elected. they need their resources, exactly. but you give them the freedom to create and yeah. to try wacky things. Exactly. And if they need support, especially in, in, in machining and, and making prototypes, of course, you can offer them of course, yeah, the factory of close to it. Now, do you find um, Swiss culture is very innovative or very traditional and you know hard to change? I would I would say it depends on the people. I mean, if you have people are people, uh, and sure. uh, depending on how they grew up. And I found out there's no difference between uh, Europeans, Americans, okay. or Asians, depending how, what 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 freedom of, of of activity you give to them. Uh. Right. And so if you give them space to develop, uh, I don't think there's a difference between Swiss and, and other nations. Uh. Perfect. And I, I found I found it quite attractive. Uh, I will show you later on. Uh, Something which is crazy, but we cannot film it. Huh? <laughs> Bye, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This building was the assembly line for those original lathes in what year? In uh, 1875. When I was a young guy. Yeah. And it, it's like, it would be a good looking guy at the time. Almost 150 years ago. Exactly. Okay, I need another picture of these lathes yeah. and then we can move on. Yeah. Rebuilt machines, 20 years old. New electronics if they need it, all new updating. And when they rebuild a machine, oh, look at this. Look at this one. This is an old machine, completely rebuilt. Everything. So you get practically a new machine. So you get completely everything new. Wow. You know, when you buy a machine like this one, you cannot complain, eh? right? Fantastic. Brand new, brand new everything. Brand new wiring, plumbing, everything new. <laughs> you know, and famous companies do that. Yeah? Famous big companies that just want the same machine and rebuild and then last another 20 years. Your customers, you mean? Yeah. Before. But this is how they come in. So a customer... He, put, he puts here, this is, the, this is the rise of the machine, how it looks like, and then the outcome you have seen before. Yeah. So they use it really hard, it's getting a little yeah. sloppy, it's getting a little old yeah, or outdated completely. or the electronics go bad yeah. or something. Then they'll send it back here for a refurb. Yeah. And then you just go over it. And is that cost effective? Is that good for the customer? For the customer, of course. Yeah, for not us, so much for, for you. For us, I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Explain to me these, these multi-bar feeders. Yeah. What, what's going on here? So I'm trying to figure out what's going on with all these tubes. So basically this is a it's like a, a barrel huh? yeah. with uh, tubes and you put the bars into these tubes. Yeah? So you have like a, like a gun, huh? you have like a pistol, you have this revolver yeah. with the bars in and then you push it to the, to the machine tool yeah? with a push rod system. You can also you can look later on. Oh, right? push here. rods, okay. So nothing goes through the center basically? No. Nope. Like through the middle? No, no, it goes here. Huh? And, and then the it's like, like a the rotation. bars spin within yeah. as they rotate. Exactly, exactly. Like all brand new. Whoa, this place is huge. Yeah. Windows everywhere. Yeah. I love it. Every yeah. factory has windows. It's a very old building here. I asked if I could take home a bone screw because I've always wanted one. Yeah, that one's titanium. I can feel that. Some of them are stainless. That one's probably stainless. These actually go in people. Can you imagine having that guy in you? They're super unique because the threads are different. In fact, here, this is the implant. It goes in, Whoa. in the bone. 
Yeah, these are insanely oblong. They're just crooked. Strong. So making these from titanium. Titanium is not only hypoallergenic, so it's safe in the body, right? But the bone will actually grow to it. So I, I, if I'm right, all of these titanium ones, the bones, well, they're permanent, right? The bones will yeah. actually, yeah, exactly. actually grow onto it. So that was fun. Tornos Factory is an amazing place. It was really cool to see their company culture, talk to their CEO for several hours, go out to lunch with him, go, go into lunch. Um, that was cool. And yeah, he had a lot of really interesting things to, things to say, both on camera and off camera privately as well. Um, man, I learned a lot. I just need time to digest it. So now I'm off to Germany to the Kern factory. I'm staying at the something something Wilmilhofen. My German is terrible. Um, Google Maps to the rescue. So insert picture here. This is my wife took this this morning, uh, reminding me that I forgot all my extra batteries and all of my um, extra SD cards that I was totally gonna bring for the Canon M50. So this is the only one that I have and it's dead now. I can charge it, but I need more than one. So I just went to an electronics store here in Moutier, Switzerland, and uh, no no go. He's like, I'll have it in a week. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I'm gonna find luck. I'm sure there's something, but timing wise and stuff, I don't know. I might just film everything on my phone, but we'll figure it out. Off to Germany. <laughs> 